know, I enjoy coming up after the kids. You know, I like this feeling of, oh, isn't that great? The kids are up here and they're trying and they're working. And I somehow take comfort that my heavenly father is up there saying, oh, isn't that, yeah, he's new sweet. He's coming up and he's doing his best too. So I just take comfort that God looks on us as his children. And he sees us in the same way. Thanks, uh, Paul, for reading that passage. Um, I don't know that I've ever had to live that passage out more than I have this week. Um, you know, not going in a, de a lot of detail, but several people have mistakenly said, well, Jeff, how was your week? And I said, well, really, it's been one of the worst weeks I've ever had. I have never felt under such spiritual attack, not, not from without, you know, the incidences that we're involved are, are months ago, and they're moving on, but yet I became so aware of the struggle in me. You know, where's this anger coming from? Where is this resentment coming from? You know, and I was joking with several of the guys. We were out with Delix yesterday getting some material for the kids' craft. And I said, you know, I thought it was going to be easier when I got older. <clears throat> but it's not. It's not. You know, all along I have had to lean so much on this put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You know, one of the great things about being a church is, that's alive and, and coming together is on our Thursday night Bible study, we were able to share this also. You know, and, and the Crossmans are there, and Jim's there, and we, there was just such encouragement to us. And we are so grateful for that. But see, that's part of what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to finish up our series on A Church Alive. Now, I have to be honest, and I told Paul this, at first, when he presented that, I was like, I don't know, that just really doesn't do much for me. But I think it has been, for me, one of the best series of about six, eight weeks that I've just been able to really unpack the Word of God and look at the church. So I want to start tonight with this question, or actually several questions. Why are you, why are you here? Why do you come to church what makes you leave what you're doing on a nice Sunday afternoon and come together? Okay, let's think about that. Now, how many of you say, oh, I came to be blessed? To hear some teaching, hear the music, and just let God bless me. Okay, nothing wrong with that. I hope you came to be blessed. But I want you to think about as you leave being a blessing to others. Not come to be blessed, but how do we be a blessing to others? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful for what you have done in our life. And Lord, this verse says that in these times of trial, we are to be thankful and Lord God, I thank you for this week that you have taught me. Lord, it hasn't been easy. Um, there's been lost sleep. And there's been the re realization of the sin and ugliness in my own heart. But Lord, we are your children. And your word tells us to let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. In which the, indeed you were called into one body and be thankful. Lord, you are so welcome here tonight. Holy Spirit, come as the song said and fill this place. Lord, as the worship team led us, there was such this sense of worship. Lord God, let us worship you tonight. Okay, we're going to start. Tonight is the final. And we're just going to review some of the places we've gone on this journey. And I want us to take us to one final point. So we started in Acts 2, 
verses 42 through 44. And they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and the breaking of bread and to prayer. And everyone kept feeling a sense of awe and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were gathered and they all had the same thing in common. So we talked about the four aspects of an alive church. One was being devoted to the apostles' teaching. And one of the things that came out of that message was, don't have a passion for God's Word. Have a passion for God who wrote the Word. You know, time in Scripture is so important. But you want your passion to be getting to know God through His Word. And it's through that that we begin to trust God and are led into action. Then we talked about the fellowship and breaking of bread. One of the main purposes of the church is to fulfill this desire that we were all created with a deep desire and a re relational connection to God and to one another. There is a reason there is so much focus in the New Testament and the early church, well, for that matter, the Old Testament, of coming together for holidays, for celebrations, because it builds community that God created us to have. This, the term is used in the Bible is fellowship which means a relationship characterized by sharing or having things in common. Fellowship. We're devoted to His Word. We want to fellowship with one another. Then God took over a night that we talked about praying together. And we actually went through this prayer model of Acts. And we're going to get back to that tonight. But we want to be a praying church. You know, this is one of the reasons we have the uh, messenger prayer page. Where we can let one another know what's going on. And we can be praying. Then we moved into the one another passages. Paul started us out. On this journey. And let me read some of that were from his message that really made an impact on me. Jesus is taking people from every tongue and tribe and nation, every people group, culture, and language, from every socioeconomic background, meaning rich and poor, and he is forming one people of God. There are not different nationalities in his kingdom. In God, there is one group of people. And you are a part of that. If you accept him as Lord and Savior, God is creating one people. Then we had this, that the key goal of the whole letter of Romans, the whole goal of the gospel is this, and it's Romans 15 5 through 7. Now the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus, so that with one accord you may be with one voice glorifying God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, accept one another as Christ also accepts us to the glory of God. Think about this. Accepting one another. You know, that's, that leads right into where Tommy took us. On love one another. And I asked both of these guys this week, what is it that stands out from your messages that you really want to focus on again tonight? And Tommy said, one of the things that really struck him is to love without hypocrisy. 
You know, that's so challenging. It's so easy. You know, oh, I'm fine. You know, yeah, that's fine. You really drive me crazy, but that's okay. Let us love one another without hypocrisy. Because that's how God loves us. You know? And it's a challenge, isn't it? It is a challenge. To love the way God loves us. See, this was what was hard for me this week. Once again, I'm, I'm realizing I struggle with certain issues. Why can I not lay it down? Why can I not continually put on love and joy and peace and compassion and kindness? That's a struggle. But yet... Love without hypocrisy. If God can love me in spite of my sin, why do I struggle loving someone else? Doesn't mean it's easy. And at times it means you have to go to one another quickly and get clarification. Well, Tanya, I don't understand why you said that. Help me understand it. Because human nature is if I think Tanya says something that I don't quite understand, human nature is going to assign a negative motive to that. Oh, well, Tanya said this because she doesn't like me. Tanya said this because of this. You know, and how fast does Satan get in there and divide us? So to love without hypocrisy means go quickly. Talk to someone that if you're confused, if you become a little bit angry, and you need to go say, you know, David, I, I'm sorry, but can you help me understand what you said? What, what did, did you mean something? This is what I heard. And I'm sure David's quick. You know, no, no, that's not what I meant. But see, an alive church loves one another. We admit our faults, we admit our weaknesses, but our desire is to love. So we've looked at a church then that studies the Word of God, we fellowship together, we pray together, we focus on these one another passages. There are 59 different passages in the New Testament that talk about one another's, from love to encourage one another. That was the one that I got to speak on. And most of us need encouragement. How many of you were here remember, you probably don't remember much of what I said except for one thing. Do you remember the story of the father who came out of the stands to help his son finish an Olympic race. Yes. See, so you remember that. And think about this beautiful picture of the father seeing his son that the, at a moment that could have been a triumph in his life to compete in the, Olympic, uh, the Olympics and to go down with an injury. And what does his father do? He comes out of the stand, picks him up, and says, let's do that together. To me, we want to be that for one another in an alive church. We want to do that as the body of Christ. But now i got to say, but okay, that sounds really good. But, but why is that so important? Why really is it so important that we focus on one another? See, many of us come from church backgrounds that, hey, I go to church, I go to Sunday school, I study the Word of God, I'm growing in my faith. I'm getting closer to God. Is that what we're called to do? I, I love this. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people say no. Well, I'd say, well, okay, why do you think that way? 
But I want us to go to one uh, passage. If you have your Bibles, let's go look at John 17, verses 18 through 23. John 17, 18 through 23. And this is where I want to camp out for a little while tonight. This is the prayer that Jesus prayed. He prays for himself. He prays for his disciples. And then it says he prays for all believers. John 17, 18 through 23. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. And this is where Jesus is praying for you, okay? Let's understand that. This is where Jesus is praying for you. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that, listen to this, the world may believe that you have sent me. And I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Here it is again. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Guys, why is it important that we be an alive church? Why is it important that we be growing in His Word? Why is it important that we be praying together? Why is it important that we focus on these one another's? Because the world is watching. The world is full today of churches that aren't doing these things. There is division. There is strife. There is not a devotion to the true Word of God. There's very much focus on feelings and what it means to you. And I, We could go down a long line. But see, the world is watching His church. He's watching you in how you function within the body of Christ. So we haven't even gotten into how God has diff created each one of you differently to be part of this body. That's why we want you serving in this church. Not to make it easier for those in leadership, but we want to give you the opportunity to do what God has called you to do. God has given you talents to use for His glory. God has given you abilities to use for His glory. This is how we take the focus off of, God, be a blessing to me. To God, let me be, excuse me, a blessing to someone else. God, let me be a blessing to someone else. God, let our church be a blessing to someone else. See, this time is not to come to be entertained. I didn't, I missed this part in my notes. But I read it in a book yesterday. You know, so, so many of the churches today are about entertaining you. Even it said, teaching you how to sing, teaching you how to do this. But it's all about you. It is a consumer mentality that God exists for you. No. You exist for God. You exist to bring God glory. You bring God glory through your involvement in the church. Why? Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them 
even as you have loved me. Think about this. One of the great things about the international church is look at all the different nationalities represented here. I mean from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, uh, Holland, Moldova, America, India, Russia, England. Norway. Norway. Sorry, Tommy. <laughs> Forgot our, our good Norwegian. <laughs> but what does this do? <laughs> Where's Karina from? Ukraine. <laughs> we get to experience the love of God by being in his body. You know? And if you're struggling with that, if I don't feel welcome here, oh, I don't this, let us pray for you. Let us know how we can serve and love you. But more importantly, before we pray, I want you to understand that we want to equip one another for service. This is where I want to go back quickly to the passage that Paul read. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Guys, I've, we've said this before. You are the only, some of you are the only people, the only Jesus they will ever see in their life. When someone looks at you, do they see Jesus? In one of my messages, I, I shared with you Acts 4.13. Now let me just go read that real quickly and then we're going to spend some time in prayer. Acts 4.13. And now they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men. The, the Pharisees were marveling. And they began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. Guys, that's, that's what I, we want for one another. When they see each one of you, are they going to see and know through your love, that person's been with Jesus. That person has allowed Jesus to take the focus off of themselves and put it on to someone else. Love one another that the world may believe that you have sent me.